Welcome to our podcast today. This is Coach Eric Johnson, the brand. This is Coach and the Source. Where are we got on tap today, EJ? Hey, hey, pack mentality. And that's a, that's a big subject that you and I have always talked about. You know, guys, leaders or followers, or are they just kind of like, oh, what's the best club to go to? What's the best trainer to go to? Uh, what's the best sports psychologist? What's the best diet? And it's just, oh, we'll do this subject or we'll do this this guy, or we'll do this lady, and that's who you should go to, and everyone just follows. It's pack mentality, Aaron. That's what we're going to talk about today. I guess it can go a lot of different ways because <clears throat> we seem to just in general always look for this winning formula, and we always look for this winning formula outside of ourselves. And I think as an athlete, in most cases, your own personal growth is is finding the answers within yourself. I tell my athletes this all the time. There's a lot of different paths to success, and especially in training. You know, there's a lot of guys who achieve what they want to achieve in a lot of different ways. What you've got to do is figure out what's the best way for you. And just to kind of copy and paste what someone else is doing doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have the same result as they do. So... I always want to have the athletes look inward and say, hey, what's going to work for me? And not just, okay, well, I see this guy having success with this program, so I'm going to jump on the bandwagon and do that. Um, that's just one area. But I mean, the pack mentality to me <clears throat> permeates a lot of things. It's it's the decisions people make uh, about their athletic career. It's the teams they pick the training programs they go to, just a lot of different areas that can go left if you don't pick right. So um, it's kind of where I'm starting at initially with this subject. Um, I think you're right. I never, I didn't think about it that way. I like, I like what you said about just picking, you know, organizations and, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, people don't really make decisions on their own. It's like, it's especially now, and I don't know if this is a COVID thing or not, Aaron, um, but it seems like to me, everyone can't think on their own anymore. And if they don't think on their own or they make a mistake, then it's like doom, it's over. And they don't like fight through it and kind of figure out, you know, what they're doing, you know, because I think you attain what you want to attain through failure and success and like any great athlete you go through trials and tribulations and i think a lot of athletes these days are afraid to do that you know and that's why i think they go into this pack mentality because they're afraid to think on their own and really discover who they are as a as an athlete and i think that's the journey that leads to at athletic success is your journey as an athlete to figure it out and you find out <clears throat> who you really are so i you know that's kind of like my, my my initial take on it and just to piggyback on your thought about uh being more of an individual rather than a a, a group yeah i mean i don't know maybe it's just my tendency as a natural contrarian <laughs> I, I, i'm not that um big on the pack mentality. And it just seems as though, again, I want athletes to kind of discover their own path. I mean, it doesn't mm -hmm. hurt to kind of see what other people are doing and, and get information from that, but it can be to your detriment too, if you're not willing to make those adjustments that are best for you. And I get it. <clears throat> There's a, a level of comfort in being at the, with the pack. But okay. I kind of have a saying, if you're with the pack, expect to be with the pack. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. It, that's just kind of how it is. And yeah, you can, you know, people come up with these quotes, uh, you know, steel sharpens steel and all this sort of thing. But I've found from my own experience and just with working with elite level athletes, there's a point where there's got to be some degree of separation. And to me, I, I, I always think at some point, sports can be one of the loneliest things you do if you're trying to achieve those higher levels. Because mm. not everyone is going to be 
fit for that journey. You know, everyone is not going to be built for that. So you're not going to move along with a bunch of friends and everyone's going to be end up at the same point. Yeah. Uh, so you've got to understand that and understand that, hey, I may have to do some of these things on my own and move forward that way and be comfortable with that. And it might mean doing things that your peers aren't doing, training a different way, going to a different team, different location, just doing things that are in your best self-interest. Mm -hmm. And that's not being selfish. It's just being true to the path that you need to take to achieve the goal that you want. Yeah. And again, you know, this pack mentality kind of stifles that. It, it stifles the individualism. It stifles <clears throat> the creativity, the, the aspects of sports that I think really build you as a person. You know, I wonder why athletes can't reach out and, and do it. I guess it's my big, my biggest thought, you know, my biggest kind of uh, conversation I have with myself is like, you know, why don't athletes go through this trial and error? And why is it always one thing is best for everyone? I'm not sure if I really get that. And the athletes that, Aaron, we either share or we send to each other. That's the first thing I find out about them is their mental mentality. What are you thinking? Why do you want to do that? What's your what's your goals? And a lot of them don't have any goals, Aaron. It's it's interesting to me as a as an athlete that achieved the highest level of going to Major League Baseball. You know, I had aspirations, goals. I wanted to be an All Star. I wanted to be an All League guy. I wanted to be the best defender. I wanted to be the best hitter at my position. No one has those kind of goals anymore. And I think they go hand in hand with training. If you don't have any goals and you say, ah, just, I'll just kind of be like this, then I think that's why they follow this pack mentality because everyone does it, that, then it, it must be good, you know, kind of mentality. And I think the athletes who are, are far equipped to reach the highest level that they can achieve, and whether they reach it or not, Aaron, they have these aspirations of being the best and trying to figure out how to get there or be the best that they can be. And, th and they will step outside the box and not follow this pack mentality and move on a journey that takes them to different levels and make them a better person in the end. At the end of the day, it's going to make you a better person. Sport will end. And I think it's just, you know, I don't understand, and get back to my point, why athletes don't have goals and aspirations and maybe that's why they fall into that pack mentality of thinking when they're training or what they're trying to do i want to be on the team and that's what that means yeah i i mean i would agree i i think there's a comfortable there's i don't know what the word is comfortability i guess with um being mediocre and i think people are okay with being mm -hmm. mediocre that's the that's the new standard. And maybe part of that is because as you start to separate yourself, you're subject to a lot more criticism and singling out. And don't want that. Most people don't want that fire. <laughs> they don't want to yeah. be criticized. They don't want to be poked fun of. And yeah, a lot of times in this society, we love to see that person who has stepped out fail. And maybe that's what keeps these athletes from stepping out more and more athletes stepping out or there seems to be a resentment when people do try and blaze their own trail and mm -hmm. I, I don't mm -hmm. think that's particularly right mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. you got to do what's right for you and stand on that and you know damn what everyone else thinks and as long as you can live with the decisions that you make mm -hmm. uh, then you should be okay with it because the one thing you don't want as an athlete at the end of your career is to have resentment because you just followed what everyone else told you. Well, it's your athletic career. Take charge of it. All right. And right. it's not your parents' career. It's not your coach's career. It's your career. Mm -hmm. And you've got to you've got to be involved enough in it to one give input. And that's part of the, the coach athlete, the evolution of the coach athlete relationship that I try and have with athletes. So athletes first come to me when they're younger and 
yeah, the, it's pretty much of one, uh, the communication or is not communication, but the information is one direction, you know, me to them because they right. just don't have the knowledge base yet. But I want that to grow from me telling you what to do to us discussing what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. You saying, hey, this is what I'd like to do. What do you think? Now we're collaborating. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think athletes spend most of their lives just waiting for a coach to tell them what to do. And sometimes yeah. it's at the, um, what's the word? At the loss of not listening to their own inner voice. And, and so what ends up happening is they spend all these years listening to what everyone else is telling them, but not listening to their own inner voice of following their own inner compass. And in the end, they don't get to where they want to be. And then they're resentful of where they ended up and blame their coaches. And it's like, well, at what point did you take charge and accountability of the direction of your career? Right. And, and I also need to be empowered to do that so that they can feel that they have a voice in the destiny or the destination and how they're going to, how they're going to get there. And then just real quick, one other thing is you mentioned mm -hmm. goals. Athletes, yeah. you don't seem athletes may not have any goals or the athletes don't have goals that are kind of really concrete and saying, hey, this is what I want to achieve. Right. I also don't think, and I, it, what's wrong with aspiring to greatness? Right. You, you know, and <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with dreaming to be great and aspiring to be great. And you know, if you don't make it, that's fine. But you have to shoot for something. And the low bar of being in the pack and looking around next to you because everyone else is there and saying, hey, this is good enough. Eh, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, I think you sell yourself short and, mm -hmm. you know. I don't think that's the best way to go about playing sports. If it is fine, if that's all you want, that's all you want. Right. But again, don't, don't arrive at a point of, you know, regret and resentment later. Right. You know, Aaron, it's funny. You said that and two think two points that come to mind and uh, I'll go off one. You just mentioned is goals, you know, these stepping stairs, these, these stones, these pillars you're, you're trying to achieve. Yeah. What's wrong with that? I don't, I don't get that. And I was with a guy last night, Michael Aikawa. I'm going to mention his name. Shout out to him real quick. But, you know, here's a guy that we saw him at 13, 14 and how far he's come and how much better he's getting. But he has like he goes, I want to play Major League Baseball. So it's like, OK, I got to my college goal, which was a goal, his goal. He goes, but I want to go beyond that. I want to try to play that level. And this is what I'm going to do. What's wrong with that from a division three player that is in, is in the, going to be in the, that's, I think that's awesome. He now has something he's trying to attain that is greater. Right. And maybe, maybe they'll laugh at him. I'm not, maybe, yeah. you know, he's going to try to achieve this. And I support that yeah. because He's willing to not have the group mentality, the group pack mentality of saying, okay, I'm in school. We're going to try to win this and that's it. And mm -hmm. I'm done. Yeah. Kind of thing where he's trying to push himself, push himself, push himself, you know, and going beyond that. And then it brought me to another athlete who I had earlier this week, Aaron, and trying to get him to lock in to say that, hey, you are this this good. Don't listen to what everyone else is saying. Exactly. Seek your own path. <clears throat> attain what you want to attain. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the noise. Yeah. Go ahead and find your own path and move forward. And I told him, I kept on saying, listen, you have the ability. Here's another professional person that's been in a major league. That's my year says you have ability. Right. Why aren't you going to like listen to that person who has a pedigree that's okay. at the highest level than these other people who don't have the pedigree that are trying to put you in this pack mentality. Get out of that. Let's go forward and keep striving for the best. So that was the, I just wanted to kind of go off that goal thing you said. And then my second point, and, and this is a question for you. When do athletes and what has been your experience of collaborating when do we find that when do they start collaborating with us you and i what's your experience with it um 
when does that happen? When what's your take on that? When does that happen for an athlete? Either you have or what you've seen in the past. Um, I have an interesting, you know, take on that too. But I wanted to know what your take was on this because I think that's an important subject. Because a lot of people don't understand that. I think when you said coaches tell players to do it and they just do it, you know, that player never gets challenged. And I, you mentioned that. And I think it's a great point. Yeah, well, I, you know, you just said something that's that's a good point. So that player doesn't get challenged, but also the coach <clears throat> and the trainer doesn't get challenged. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a healthy conversation about what direction you should take, why you're taking it, and what are the expected results. But to go back to your first uh, question, you know, it's it's an individual sort of thing. You arrive there with different athletes at different times. It depends on their level of <clears throat> experience, time in, their IQ about their uh, their particular sport um, and how to train for their sport, their IQ about how well they know their body. Mm. Uh, one of the first things that I try and get younger athletes to do is be able to articulate to me what they're feeling in training because that's the first step. To, to being able to have a productive conversation with your coach or your trainer. And so you, you don't want to let athletes get off with, how are you feeling? Good. Well, how did the game go? It was okay. No, you, you try and have a little bit more open-ended answers. So that way you get them to exercise those mental muscles to actually go back and rethink and analyze what has happened to them, how they're feeling and articulate that to you. So then that way you have a better picture of how to train and help that athlete. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. people have to understand that if you don't give us information, we're going off of educated guesses, but we can do a lot better job if you give us a lot more of your own intimate information. So, yeah, I like you that. know, that, that, that growth again happens over years. For instance, Robert Stevenson, he's yeah. been now, I don't know, got 15 years. Wow. So we're at the point before when he first started with me. Yeah, Robert, do this. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Boom, boom, boom. Then it was like, okay, Robert, you've been in minor league ball now for this first year. What do you see? What do you think you need as an athlete? Okay, so now I want more feedback from him on what his vision of his mm -hmm. model might be. Mm -hmm. Fast forward now, again, it's 15 years. He's got, I don't know, like seven, eight years yeah. More yeah. in the big leagues. And now it's like, okay, Robert, what happened last year? What direction would you like to take? What do you need to be able to do to stay in Major League Baseball? Mm. Right. And so... Again, now we're collaborating. Now he's saying, hey, Aaron, I got these exercises that I think I'd like to do or these areas that I think I want to train in. What are your thoughts? Okay, where do we fit these things in? How do we plan this out so it makes sense? But Robert, don't forget, we still need to do these things. So it's a back and forth. Yeah, and It doesn't have to be contentious. It never right. is for us. We just say, hey, right. you know, and he'll say, oh, yeah, I was thinking about that. And I'll say, yeah, you know, I was thinking he might bring up something. It's like, yeah, I was thinking. So we end up getting in tune with each other. Yeah. But he might learn something about himself over the course of a season or maybe talking with other athletes and say, hey, Aaron, maybe I'd, I'd like to try this. I hear about this. What do you think? We have the conversation. I can tell them what I think about it. We can decide whether we move forward with it or we don't. But that's the sort of evolution that should happen. And it can happen at younger ages. You know, again, that's just depends on the dynamic between the coach and the athlete. But um, to just at this point in his career be blindly asking me, what do I do? I would be like, nah, dude. <laughs> Where you at? Yeah. <laughs> right? No. Uh-uh. So again, when I talk to my my freshman athlete, I say, you know, most of the time, you know, it's a baseball kid. They're going to try out for the freshman baseball team. And there's going to be 70 kids out there. And I'm like, what it, what's going to make you any different than anyone else if you're doing everything that if you're doing 
what everyone else is doing. Right. You've got to start to start. You want to you want that scholarship or you want that opportunity to play varsity? Well, if you look and run and play like everyone else, well, why would they pick you over anyone else? Right. So there always has to be a degree of separation. You in that that separation has to be visible physically, work ethic, your approach, your enthusiasm and vigor for the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of those things have to be there that separate you from the next kid. You know, we talk about a lot of times we talk about separation. It's all and we usually will talk about, you know, in baseball, the tools, the five tools and, right, and having right. that plus ability. But there are also all those other things too that separate you. And, mm -hmm. and again, it's safe to be in the pack, but in the end, I don't you know where's that gonna get you? It doesn't, you have to learn. Athletes have to learn how to create opportunities. They, Man, you, yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. I mean, they do. They have to learn how to create opportunity. And coaches know what they're looking for when they see it. And you have to be able to separate yourself to do that. You know, Aaron, just, you know, kind of wrap it up here a little bit. Thinking about what you just said, you know, coaches look for outliers yes. players that are different mm -hmm. um and then they bring them into their mentality to win a champion coaches are looking for those players they're not looking for pack mentality players when they're trying to get them at the next level whether it's major college sports professional sports they're looking at those guys who are outliers. And I think when you have that pack mentality and you're trying to achieve going to the next level, I don't know if that's the right way to go about it, you know, in your training or trying to pick a team to go play for or whatsoever. I always look at it this way. And you said it earlier, what's wrong with being great. And I always say greatness wins. And that's by taking a chance and creating opportunities that allow you to challenge yourself and get you where you need to be. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that's why athletes need to get out of this pack mentality because all they're doing is not really challenging themselves or, or going the extra mile. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. With that said, Mr. Source, this is Coach EJ. The brand. Mr. Coach Aaron, the source. We'll see you. <laughs>